I came across a cool and rare World War II related book. Uh, it's also related to New Orleans history, really. Odd little confluence there, so I thought I would share it with you. Uh, there's a, or well, there was, a longtime cartoonist in New Orleans called John Chase. And he was first hired by the New Orleans Item, that was the name of the newspaper, the New Orleans Item, in 1927. Therefore, he was in his prime during World War II, and this book is a collection of his World War II cartoons. The book is called 40 Cartoons in Wartime. And one of the reasons this caught my fancy is that uh, as a kid in history class, I was always fascinated with political cartoons. Like, I would just scan through the history books for the cartoons. And you can see here, this was published in the final year of the war. Here's some of the doodle art that starts off the book. This is before you get into the book proper. Uh, you'll notice some racist Japanese depictions. Uh, that was definitely a part of World War II propaganda art, unfortunately. But it's important to remember the real history. That was a part of it. And yeah, you know, tensions ran high. Dehumanizing the enemy is uh, always a part of things, and uh, especially with the surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. That was a part of the equation. Uh, the most notable thing here, of course, is that depiction of Hitler there. That's really fascinating. He shows up in a lot of American and Allied, you know, drawings and art. Uh, never seen him quite like that. So here's John Churchill Chase, a New Orleans native who became, like I said, kind of an institution in the city. Here he is working on a large public mural that he did. Another interesting project of his was uh, this work here. It's basically a comic book, like a proto-comic book almost, uh, recounting the Louisiana Purchase. And I feel like this is the kind of thing that you see much more often nowadays. Uh, you, know, there's, you know, they have comic books about ancient Greek philosophers. I own one collection like that. I remember when the 9-11 Commission report was done in comic book format. And I thought that was interesting anyway. Uh, here, by the way, is a street in New Orleans. You can see the downtown in the background named after John Chase. One of the things that made his career legendary is related to the assassination of Huey Long, right? Famous, infamous politician from Louisiana. The story goes that after this uh, political boss of all political bosses was murdered, the state police threatened to shoot any reporter who took a picture of the scene. And so there were none, but Chase went down to Baton Rouge, interviewed eyewitnesses, and sketched a representation of the murder, which then got published throughout the nation. You're looking at it here, uh, and that's a pretty unique instance, like this kind of a political cartoon-style breaking news capture of a political assassination. In the photography era, anyway, that's a little bit strange, right? The crime scene visual being circulated in most instances would, of course, be not the murder itself, because photographers don't happen to be around when that happens all the time, uh, but the aftermath, you know, like the famous mob murder scenes, stuff like that. And now let's move on to the book in question. Look how interesting this first visual is, the first large visual. Uh, you have the swastika and Nazi leadership kind of clinging for dear life on this you know, dying tree of Nazism. How great is that? One of the interesting things about reading the book is how it traces out the history of the war. So here's one of the first cartoons, and it's lampooning the idea that America would be able to just stay out of this global conflict. We talked about how Hitler is portrayed often in this kind of thing, and here he is. Uh, and here he is facing off with Russia. And you're going to see a great old-time saying down below. It comes from boxing, and the point was that uh, Russia had a significant size advantage, and that might not work out well for Germany, despite them having the better army. Uh, speaking of that, that's what this next cartoon is about as well. Germany, of course, had tremendous success early on before getting bogged down. Chase in this cartoon seems to focus on what are they gaining, you know, back when they were winning. And that touches on the mysterious nature of Germany's invasion of Russia, which people still talk about. One aspect that gets overlooked is that uh, Hitler had to show that he was still this conquering figure. Uh, he, was, he had gone as far west as he could and was stuck trying to conquer England. That stalemate was like a dagger to this air of inevitability that he wanted to cultivate, that, you know, the Nazis were going to take over all of Europe, all of the world. So while he was stuck there, he then lashed out to the east. So he could continue gaining new territory and continuing the theme from when he was steamrolling his way through Europe. In this cartoon, again, centered on Russia, uh, the ghost of Napoleon looks on. That was not a difficult historical comparison to make, uh, and many made it. 
here's a stunning image talking about the aftermath of all this. You know, things really changed worldwide when it comes to the perception of the Nazi war machine. And that was exactly what Hitler had wanted to avoid, first with the Battle of Britain and his invasion of England stalling out, and then with his invasion of Russia. Here's another great drawing in the same vein, the Luftwaffe fighter forming almost a cross in a graveyard. And the caption below Riley states, The Paths of Glory. Now we get some jibes at Mussolini, and how the plans for Northern Africa, the Axis plans for Northern Africa, were not working out. So you can see here he's waiting and waiting to have his victory parade in Egypt. Specifically at the bottom here, you'll see that he's waiting on a phone call from Rommel. Obvious fun is being had here with how Mussolini tried to liken himself to Roman emperors. And what with his costume? So, speaking of Mussolini, here he is. Inviting members of the Vichy government in France, that was of course the collaboration, you know, the Nazi collaboration government, uh, into his has-been club. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I think it's interesting to kind of trace out the war in these cartoons. And you can tell this is from when the Allied net was, you know, squeezing tighter and tighter. Now, here's something you might not expect. This is about oil getting taken by the black market. Uh, wars always allow black markets to flourish. Uh, you know, I think the, the location of New Orleans probably plays into this, uh, why it was on Chase's radar. New Orleans is a port city in Mississippi, obviously tons of commerce going through there. Uh, it's not far away from Houston, which is a major hub, right, for oil. Anyway, I like how it touches on, like I said, something you might not think about in terms of war and this war. Now, on to things you would think about. The passing of FDR was, of course, a major development uh, for America during the war. He almost got to see the European campaign all the way through. It was the month following his death when Germany surrendered. A noteworthy aspect here is that FDR looks pretty spry, and of course he was hiding his ill health from the American public and the world. It was later in September that same year when Japan surrendered and the war was actually over, but either way, FDR's passing here lets us know we're getting close to the end, so I just want to show one more, and it's a interesting, hopeful note for the entire world, but with a particularly American bent. Uh, the Earth's population seeking lasting peace is likened to the gold rush. Drawing-wise, composition-wise, the globe head is a strange device, but then again, this is a strange way to visually commemorate the end of the war. Well, that is it. Uh, as always, I hope you learned a little bit of history that you did not know. I certainly didn't know about Chase until I came across this book, Cartoons in Newspapers, one of the ways that people on the home front kept up with the war. Thank you.